Hello everyone and welcome to another MPI tutorial. Today I will show a slightly more realistic application looking at a beam of neutral particles that impinges on a plasma where part of the beam will ionize and another part will shine through. Um, now if you're only interested in the programming part just skip ahead. I've included some time codes in the description. So let's say we have a, a beam of particles and it is impinging on some slab of plasma and inside of this plasma it can ionize um, or it doesn't ionize and it flies through so let's say at the start we have a number of particles n0 and then at the end we will have less than or equal to n0 particles that make it all the way through. Um, so let me draw this again. Let's say this is the um, x, oh, x axis then at a zero uh, we will have n zero particles and the the plasma slab is l meters uh, wide <coughs> and there we will have n l and somewhere in between we will have n of x now the relation between n and x uh, can be represented with a, an order ordinary differential equation d and dx so we already know it should be um, negative because we're only losing particles it should be proportional to n because what you lose is um, just some relative fraction of what you put in so x times more particles means x times more losses so it's proportional to n. Also it's proportional to uh, some density of the plasma here. Let's call that lowercase n. It's, it's density in um, meter cube per meter cubed. <coughs> and additionally there's a certain uh, probability to react to ionize and that's represented with uh, sigma the cross section. So now we have our ODE. Now let's first solve this uh, analytically as far as we can. And in, in general this N and Sigma they are functions of the position. Um, let's see, minus integral 0 to x. Um, plus an integration constant. And actually, you already know this integration constant. It's um, ln of n naught. Because if x would be 0 here, this integral adds nothing. You just are left with ln n equals, well, it must equal ln n naught. So <coughs> that uh, brings us to the following. And there we have it, our analytical solution. And it's not very usable in this form, but once ns and sigma s are specified, then you can simplify this even further. But for now, this is all we know. It's the most general case. Um, so let's say ns and sigma of s are uh, some given profiles. Um, let's say it's just given on a certain grid. Uh, maybe experimentally you sampled uh, those values. Then you can integrate this by standard 
quadrature method, like the um, trapezoidal rule, Simpson's rule, whatever. Today we will look at uh, another example to tackle this problem using a Monte Carlo method. This basically means that we'll inject many, many test particles and um, for everyone we will uh, for every one of them we just roll a dice to see if it ionizes or not we will create a grid so here we will have l here we will have zero and we subdivide this into um, this will be x0 x1 x2 etc um, but if we take a subsection, so at xi and then um, xi minus 1 and xi, we will have ni minus 1 and ni. Basically, the, the number of particles after making it through this section of plasma. So, simply, um, we can express this ni as a function of ni minus 1. So ni is ni minus 1 plus the integral of xi minus 1 to xi of dn dx dx. Um, and this is given by the ordinary differential equation. So equals. All right. And. I'm forgetting something already. N of x. Um, now we have to make an approximation. So what I will use here is the trapezoidal rule to approximate this integral. So assuming we divide it in many many of these subsections we can um, write the integral um, as a function of the end and starting points. So let's say you have some function f of x, um, x, and then you have an interval from a to b where the function does something like this, let's say. Then what the trapezoidal rule does, it basically computes this, vol uh, this area here. You can read all about it on uh, Wikipedia. Um, but it basically means that fx, uh, we do b minus a to get the, the size of the interval times uh, the, the average value. Um, and that is simply fb plus fa over 2. Right, applying that here um, gives n i minus um, running out of space a bit um, n we can bring this n i to the left and I'll simplify a bit and what we then find is ni 1 plus and thus the probability to ionize uh, I, have, I haven't told you about that yet um, within so the chance that it will ionize within this region here is basically 1 minus ni over ni minus 1 um so after this volume let's say this is only 70 percent that means we have lost 30 percent so one minus this 70 gives the 30 percent chance to ionize and thus this equals xi minus xi minus one now what we will do in our code we will just step through the all of these volumes and after each volume we will just take a, a random number um, which is 
inside of 0 to 1 and if um, rand is less than the ion we ionize and if we have enough test particles and a fine enough grid this will approach the true uh, analytical solution okay let's start coding now note that every particle that we inject this, these test particles they're completely independent of the behavior of every other particle and thus this problem is of the embarrassingly parallel class so we expect this to parallelize amazingly well the only um, communication necessary will be at the end when we combine the results we found and bring this result to the, the main process, the root. So I suspect MPI will work pretty well here and we'll build that in right from the start. So let's first create a, a program And we'll again use MPI F08. And now what I want to do is create another module in which we have all of the subroutines we will need. And here in the main program, I'll just call um, call these routines so it looks a bit more clean so we will first start with something some routine that starts the simulation this sets up the all well, a bunch of MPI variables it starts um, the wall clock etc then we do call um, initial initialize variables setting up some arrays we will need then we will actually launch the particles along the line of the beam and then in the end there must be some routine that collects the data again um, and if the rank is zero so on the root process we write this data this is another subroutine that we will need to build and then the simulation is done so we can do a call and simulation um, let's create another file so particle routines dot f90 let's say let's say that's the name uh, that's the name i choose particle uh, routines and module um, I didn't still don't know why this coloring is off when you open it up again somehow it's fine again so really weird um, so now we also need to use this module as I just did um, we will define some some variables here so rank and prox ir as before and we will find some other variables so uh, resolution, the number of particles the resolution of the grid and particles uh, per process then the exposition of every particle um, the grid, the plasma density, 
the plasma, well, the, the ionization cross section, and the line density of the particles um, of the ions along the beam line. So it's in uh, particles per uh, meter instead of per cubic meter. That is actually the output we're interested in in the end. The length of the beam and some analytics, so ending and starting time. So after starting the simulation, we um, set the number of particles, let's say 120. Um, in practice, this would be much more, but just sim as a simple way to start. Um, and this will be divided over the number of processes. For efficiency, you would like this to be divisible by the number of processes. For now, I will require this number of particles to be divisible by the number of uh, processes. It's in general not required, but this means that all the arrays will be of the same size for every process, which can come in handy. But of course, you can gen generalize this and remove this restriction in the end. So if it is not zero, the, the modulus must be not divisible. We print some warning message and, well, error message, and we call MBI abort. So you could actually just call stop in Fortran, but that uh, may not immediately end all of the other processes. MPI abort is a cleaner way of uh, stopping all processes. Um, yeah, so the communicator, which processes we want to abort, well, all of them, then the error code, and this is another uh, error variable. Right, so when setting num particles, we can, and assuming it's divisible, then we can compute particles per proc, which is the number of particles divided by n procs. Um, the grid resolution, which I will set to be 1024, I mean, in the end, uh, the security resolution, the number of particles, the length, they should be uh, model inputs, maybe defined in some name list file to make it more accessible. If I change this now, I need to recompile every time, which is not very user friendly. But it's just an example. So to speed things up a bit, I will just hard code it like this. The length of the plasma slab, let's say one meter, Okay, then we can now start filling in these these routines. So the module contains um, subroutine, and what we first do is we um, call MPI init. Then we call MPI com rank to get the rank of all the processes. This is not necessary per se, but, uh, well, actually it is because I'm using rank uh, here. So we need to rank. And also we will start the wall clock. So with MPI, MPI W time, wall time, is a nice way to keep track of the, the wall time. Um, now, I said before that every MPI routine, it needs this I error variable at the end. There are a few exceptions and MPI wall time is one of them. So it takes no arguments. That will be the start. Let's now also build um, end simulation. So we get the final time, so MPI W time. Uh, 
this is in seconds by the way not milliseconds and we just print how much time it took to finalize the, uh, the simulation and then we call MPI finalize So now we at least have a program that works. It doesn't do anything yet, but it should be compilable. Um, in order to, well, to speed things up, because we will, we will need to recompile, run, compile in a different way, run again many times. So now it makes sense to create a make file. So this is not necessary, but it's quite handy. So make file we define the fortran compiler to be mpi fort this could be different on a different pla uh, platform for intel it might be mpi i fort um, yeah some optional compiler flags we'll leave that open for now um, then we define some debug flags and I like personally these are all warnings, uh, extra warnings, some runtime checks, all of them, and backtrace. This is, last one is especially handy because if there's an error, it will tell you which line it crashed on. Um, but I believe there is a slight punishment in terms of uh, performance. So once you're done building your code, you want to be compiling with without these optimization uh, flags. So f optim, uh, we will make that optimization level three. And there are some other flags you can add to this, but let's keep it simple for now. Then we define the source files. And that is simply particle routines.f90 and beam.f90. Then the object files, um, these are just the compiled source files. Um, and what we can do is simply take whatever is an SRC and we will replace that by .o. So compiled, you, cre uh, you create object file .o. And to f flags we add um, f debug at least for now. Then um, for the o files to create the o files, we will use the Fortran compiler with its flags that we specified. Um, compile, and then we'll use uh, this symbol dollar at which means left of the colon so the o files are created by compiling dash c the um the f90 file so dollar and then this uh, triangle thing takes what this whatever is on the right of the colon so that's this bit okay then to build the object files So to build the executable, we will take the Fortran compiler with it with its flags as output, we'll call it beam.x, and it will use these object files to, to make this executable. Then to clean, maybe we want to uh, recompile with different flags, you just remove everything, and for that we will remove all the object files we will remove all the um, module files if there are any and we will remove the executable okay well i went through this a bit quickly there are plenty of tutorials already out there on making make files so That should be fine. Now all we have to do is just type make. And that actually can see what it's doing. So MPI for it with all these options, blah, blah, blah. I mean, 
typing this every time you can probably see that this is quite tedious so it saves us a lot of time but actually i noticed now i made a mistake okay guys i'm back um the reason it didn't work was twofold so first i missed an end here so it just stated subroutine and not end subroutine and i was missing these routines and i was complaining about that now you can do mpi run np6 uh, for instance uh, x. <coughs> the program runs it doesn't do anything but it compiles and runs so that's good now we can start filling in these other subroutines allocate x position with the num uh, no, particles per proc the grid uh, the density the cross section and the uh, line density but this is actually <coughs> it's a cell data not grid data so it's um, let's say a particle ionizer between xi and xi plus 1 then we save it as being ionized within this cell so we'll place the ionization at the center of the cell so it's, it's one less in array length then for the x grid I'll just use a um, lin space for now so this is an implied do loop. I'll program it in a way that it doesn't rely on a linear spaced grid. You can have some grid refinement, maybe um, at certain critical or important points. The density, um, one E20 particles, um, plasma particles per cubic meter. We'll leave this as a constant for now, but this can be some kind of profile. And the cross section, that the minus 19 square meter. Also, this can be a function of the position in general, but for now, um, it doesn't need to be, just for debugging. We'll set the ion uh, line density to zero so that we can add to it later on. To launch the particles, um, we start looping over the the grid index, uh, grid index, and the particle ID. Basically, for each particle, we loop over the grid. Then two more doubles, so the random number and the uh, probability to ionize. So for all of the particles belonging to this process, we will loop over the grid index, uh, but skipping the first part because we're basically looking to see if particles ionize between two grid points. So before the first grid point, there, there was just vacuum. So there's no chance it would ionize there. So at every grid point, this probability needs to be recomputed. And as I have shown on the whiteboard, this is just the following. I had to use some line breaks in order to, um, to make it fit. Um, and we will roll a random number. This is some built-in Fortran routine. If a random number is less than probability to ionize, then we ionize basically. Um, so if all we're interested in is the ion line density, We wouldn't need to store this 
exposition at all. Um, but I'll leave it in here because often the purpose of these um, beam attenuation models is not just uh, finding out the beam attenuation, but also creating a initial distribution of test particles that we will use in some other uh, physics model. So yes, for this example, you could throw away exposition entirely and just look at the final result, which is the ion line density. That's what we're interested in. So for the density, we basically add one because there's one additional particle and we divide by uh, whatever the grid spacing is here. After we have ionized, we um, should exit the loop and go to the next particle. Right, then to collect the data, for this we will use the MPI library again. And here we will use an MPI reduction. So it reduces the amount of data um, in some way, some given operation. Right, MPI reduce, which takes a send buffer. This would be the ion uh, line density will be sent to the root and we will be receiving that in some other variable on the root process. However, for memory efficiency, we might as well just accumulate it in the same array, just keep adding to the same thing, so ion line density. Um, we don't actually need to create a new array. Then the count, which will be grid index minus one. Uh, that, that's the number of elements. The data type is MPI double precision. Um, the operation, there are some, there's some selection you can do. MPI sum is what we want to do here. We sum all the variables, accumulating it on the root process, so zero. Over all of the uh, processes in existence and that finalizes this statement. Now this won't work in Fortran because these arguments here are intent in uh, and intent out so it can't be both at the same time for that you have to specify intent in out and the way to design it is to use MPI in place for the send buffer on the root. So we still have to specify what happens if it's not the root. And in that case, we may specify ion, line, ion line density twice because the receive buffer is not actually being used on processes that are not the root. Right, this combines all of the data. We now still need to write it. One way to do that, is just in a simple ASCII file. So we open some file, let's say one, two, three, that's probably not being used yet. Um, then for all of the grid indices, we write to this file one, two, three, the average position followed by the ion line density. We close the loop and we close the file. Now we have everything uh, ready. So we clean up again, make. Ah, okay, yeah. This should be grid resolution, not grid index. MPI run. Uh, 
Uh. <laughs> right, so now again you can see the benefit of having this trace back. It tells me exactly where the problem is uh, at line 72. You can see that another file has been created, data, which holds in the left column the X position and in the right column the um, the ion density but it's still very sparsely populated uh, so let's do 120,000 Okay, that's that's better. Yeah, um, maybe a bit more even. <clears throat> so as I said, it's embarrassingly parallel. So this should scale very well when using multiple processes. The only bottleneck is. Um, combining the results at the end and also the writing of the file that's also serial but the rest is perfectly parallelizable so let's test with six processes and as you can see it's a lot faster not six times as fast but it's a lot faster um, what we can also do is now compile with optimization um, let's see. Optim. And let's do one process first. So this is basically free speed up. In this case, it's already quite significant, factor two, basically. Um, so why not, right? If your code is working, Compile it with optimization enabled. Right, so just to plot the final result, I'm going to install um, Anaconda. Okay, um, variable explore. I'm just gonna import it like this. And from the, the, the theory that I discussed before, we expect this to be an exponential decay, at least for a constant density, constant cross section. Right, and as you can see, this is plotting the ion density versus exposition. And it drops exponentially as predicted, though there is some noise which gets worse and worse, relatively speaking, uh, near the end of the plasma slab. Uh, this is simply because there are less and less test particles there. But it is predicting as we expected. So before I derived this analytical solution for the density of the neutral particles in the beam, but we built a program to actually compute the ion uh, line density. So let's derive that as well. So the neutral particles that are lost are reborn as ions. So dn dx is minus dn ion dx. And this is what we actually want to compute. equals and now we simply use this ODE from before 
Now, for constant density and cross section, um, so this x dependence disappears, that we already computed in our Fortran program. So, in that case, we must first compute n. So, n x over n0 is e to the power minus sigma n x. They are constant, so they go outside of the integral, and the integral only contributes with x. So that means that dn ion dx is simply sigma n e to the minus sigma n x. That is exactly what we found, and it looks linear, of course, on a log scale plot. Um, now let's look at the slightly more interesting uh, case. What if um, sigma is still constant, but n has an x dependency? So you can imagine that maybe in the, the center of the plasma slab it's densest and then it tapers off. And for that, let's use a normal distribution. So x minus x of the center, and this is some kind of um, parameter proportional to the standard deviation. Then the integral of sigma n s ds is simply um, and see this is by the way the center density. And then we get error functions. And that means that n equals blah, blah, blah. We can just fill this in. And dn ion dx, what we eventually want to, uh, want to know, n naught sigma nc minus Right, so this is the solution to the ion density in case of this particular plasma density and this constant um, cross-section. I have already implemented uh, these changes. It simply changed the density from a constant value to some central density, which I've left at 1 e20 per cubic meter, and then this normal distribution with the center position at uh, the center of the, the slab. I already recompiled and ran, and now when we go and plot this, we get a distribution like this. So as soon as the beam hits the plasma, the, the ionization density is very low because there's because the plasma is just really sparse, so the chances of ionizing are pretty low. But they increase as you get closer to the center. Um, the peak, however, is not at 0 0.5. It's earlier on because due to this increased ionization, there's less left of the beam to ionize. Now let's compare with our analytical solution, which I computed like this as shown on the whiteboard. Now when we plot that, it nicely overlays with what we got from our numerical model. So that confirms that we are doing the right thing.